Good morning and welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran here in Spokane. I'm Pastor Mark Nelson. I'm the interim pastor here while we're calling our third pastor and I work with Pastor Edwin and Pastor Kate. It's great to be with you. Before we begin this morning's worship, I just have a few announcements. We welcome a guest preacher this day, Pastor Ariana Ahrens. Pastor Ariana serves Lutheran Campus Ministry at EWU, and she also serves Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Cheney. Great to have you with us, Ariana. This Sunday, for the Sunday Forum, we wrap up our exile theme. And so we're going to do a couple of things. Uh, Bishop Wells will be leading that session and will ask people about their notable learnings for the year, reflect about our own experience of COVID and exile, and then ask for suggestions how we might do a better job of extended learning via the Sunday Forum. And lastly, we'll always give thanks to God for guiding and shepherding us during this time in history, during this time of exile in the pandemic. Today at 4 p.m., our youth will be meeting and they'll be playing foot golf. Foot golf is a lot like regular golf, except you use a soccer ball and shoot it toward a great big hole. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, if you want to have more information on that, please be in touch with Eric, our youth and family minister. New member classes also are today at 4 p.m. Uh, if you are interested in learning more about St. Mark's, uh, please contact Katie Cadlack. Her uh, uh, email address is in the bulletin that you can download. Eat, Pray, Laugh will meet by Zoom this Tuesday, May 4th at 7 p.m. Women are invited to this fellowship group. Contact the church office if you need to know the Zoom link. And Thursday evening Bible studies continue this week at 6 p.m., looking at the history of the prophets immediately following the exile. Again, if you need the Zoom link, contact Pastor Edwin, and you can also call the church office for that. Let's keep a brief silence, and then we will continue with the Thanksgiving for Baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrected life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth. Like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Let us pray. O oh God, you give us your Son as the vine, apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from Acts, chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? about himself or about someone else. Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here's water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord stat snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, 
he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. If in this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers, such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. First off, I don't think Jesus took public speaking 101. This speech goes around more than, I don't know, popcorn in a pan? 
In context, this is part of a chapters long speech by Jesus saying goodbye to his disciples before he is crucified. This is the big speech at the final quarter of the game to motivate the team. It's, it's the last lecture before the final where the professor throws all the small bits that they forgot about in the other class time. Vine and branches, I forgot to tell them about vines and branches. So, to keep you and me and, and everybody on track, we're going to focus on three things, mostly. <laughs> Vines, branches, fruit. Okay, here goes. Jesus is the vine. Okay? Simple, right? Uh, okay, let's move on to branches. Disciples, even us today, are the branches. We get our, our nutrients, our life force from the vine. Great. But we can be cut off from the vine. We can be cast off and thrown away. These words certainly stick out from this gospel reading. We don't often hear or more accurately want to hear Jesus speaking about cutting off and casting aside. Now, a major part of my work with campus ministry this past year particularly has been with young people who do feel cast aside, cut off, thrown away. The young man whose father is in law enforcement and responds as if personally attacked when his son mentions support of Black Lives Matter. The young man no longer feels safe or welcome at home or the young woman of immigrants who came out as queer and her mother responds that she is going to hell. The confident, hard-working student who is overloaded by classwork when professors assign work out of proportion because they are forced to teach in a new format. Cut off from the social life of young adulthood because of this pandemic, cast aside when even hundreds of job applications lead to no interviews, thrown away when the world is so uncertain, how can you even choose a path of study or a career? I'm sure many of us feel similarly during this past year of isolation, a fear of contagion, political violence, racial demonstrations. We feel fear and resentment, anxiety, grief, to just name a few. This reshaping of the world as it once was leaves us all in new territory. It is certainly hell on earth to be isolated, cut off, cast out, thrown away, Jesus reminds his disciples that they are sent into a world which will reject and refuse to listen and even persecute them. The young people I minister with experience this, and I imagine you do as well. It's all too easy to hear the law, the, the shoulds, the you haven't done or been such and such it's easy to feel this metaphorical pruning shears getting closer. The hurts of this world are real. But where is the comfort? Where is the promise in these readings? If we read it again, we can see the promise as well. The promise of relationship, of vitality and life. You are the branches a statement of fact, a statement of our connection. You are the branches, a statement of reality, not judgment. Abide in me as I abide in you. You, you plural, of course. So this can mean in all of you or even among all of you. Abide in me as I abide among you. God abides in our communities, in the faith shared together. How good is it to hear that we must lean on one another for God's presence? 
the American ethos of pulling ourselves up, of going alone, of individualism and personal freedom certainly needs to hear this. God is abiding among us in community, not in individuality. God is the vine who is so deeply connected to us that he dwells within, between, and among us. So what does that abiding look like? Where is Christ's abiding, sustaining grace available for me, for for us? Now, (laughs) I have to confess to you that I am not the Christian who gets up at the crack of dawn and sips her herbal tea while reading the Bible and praying over the day. I've always wanted to be that person. But God created me to be the person praying with students in crisis on the phone, reassuring young people is, that God is with them over Zoom, or, or singing Jesus Loves Me over my kids at bedtime, counting on the Holy Spirit to know my heart and intercede with sighs too deep for words. Christ abides between and among these small interactions for me. But that may look completely different for you. Your walk on the Centennial Trail or or your drive through Turnbull may cause you to pause and praise. God abides among you and creation. Your check or your donation of food to the feeding ministry may cause you profound gratefulness. God abides among you and the neighbor in need. We have left our buildings and discovered God was out there all along. We are being fed from the vine of God in new ways or old ways that our traditions might have ignored. Okay, so let's remember where we've been, right? Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. We are fed the life-giving word of God. Experience the connection to Jesus and the presence of God abiding among us. And then there's the fruit. So what is this fruit? This abiding, this relationship of life-giving is for a purpose. John 15, 2 reads that we are pruned in order that we might produce fruit, more abundant fruit. This pruning or other times translated as cleansing, comes through the word of God. In verse 3, you already have been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. We have been cleansed by the water and the word in order to bear fruit. So pause just a second now and take a moment. Check your arms, um, maybe your head, uh, buds, Flowers, leaves, any indications of fruit? No fruit yet, huh? Must be another metaphor. So we are fed in new and unexpected ways. What's not to say that our fruit, our discipleship, our servanthood, our care of the neighbor and creation won't take new forms as well? The disciples were certainly opened up to new forms of ministry after Jesus' resurrection and ascension. A reading from Acts, we hear Philip ending up on roads he never expected, having deep conversations with people he never expected, diving into their baptisms, certainly unexpected. A reading from Acts speaks about a eunuch, a person who most likely before puberty, had his genitals removed. They therefore were seen as trustworthy for a high government office. They were Jewish, but also from Africa, south of Egypt. And eunuchs didn't fit conventional notions of gender in the Roman world. They were simultaneously men and non-men, neither male nor female. They were neither here nor there. Were they enslaved and to be seen as despicable? Or were they a powerful official in charge of the queen's treasury? 
they are literally and wealthy enough to have an Isaiah scroll and use of a chariot, it's really difficult to put them in any box. This person is liminal, a, a fancy word for in-between places, on the edge, but certainly is not an object of pity or a freak. Like so many of us, like so many of our college students, they don't fit in the box that society has given them. And Philip runs alongside this chariot, explaining the reading of Isaiah to the eunuch right then. <laughs> he doesn't wait for officials or clergy or the Bible study leader. He doesn't look up a commentary or ask a theologian. He doesn't let the structured faith tradition get in the way of the Holy Spirit. He does biblical interpretation on the spot. But what he really does is testify. Philip is a witness. He speaks about Jesus that is already abiding among him and this eunuch. He points out the suffering of Jesus, a God who suffers as surely as this eunuch has suffered as we all have suffered. Philip, the branch, takes what he has been given through his relationship with Jesus the vine and grows fruit, the spiritual fruit of witness and interpretation. And miracle of miracles, there's more immediate, contextual, practical theology coming. The eunuch not only asks, what is this reading from Isaiah mean? But then asks, what is in my way of being part of this? What is to prevent me from being baptized? No waiting for a catechism class or, or new member classes. No review by councils and pastors. Look, there's some water. I want into this vine and branches. I want to be connected to the source of life. The new life in the crucified, resurrected, and ascended Jesus has opened new interactions, new ways of being. The limits placed on interactions of these two faithful disciples have been dissolved. When the church left the building because of the pandemic, loving our neighbor meant being open to new ways of being disciples, of bearing fruit. So you may encounter people that you never expected on roads you never expected. You may feel called to support campus ministries who care for young people in these troubled times and during great transitions in their life. You may hear of young people looking for hope, looking for a community that they can be their full, authentic, vulnerable selves with. You may encounter the joy of a biblical interpretation that is welcoming and affirming. You may find you are bearing unexpected fruit, helping others to grow because of your connection to the source of life. When planting the seed of the word on college campuses or in sanctuaries or through virtual means, in feeding ministries, in vocations as broad as dental assistants to teachers to garbage collectors to engineers, we are all called to be faithful witnesses, to bear the fruit, spread the good news. The harvest of that fruit is still in the hands of the vine grower, the gardener, the one who made sure we are connected to the life-giving vine. It is precisely because everything we do depends on Jesus that we can count on doing something meaningful. Jesus' words here remind us that it's not up to us. It never was, and it never will be. Thanks be to God.
May the God of hope keep you in all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary. He became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, He is who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. God of all fruitfulness, you abide in your church and your church abides in you. Cleanse us by your word and give yourself to the whole church on earth so that it bears fruit and witness to your love. Hear us, O God. You have created the heavens and the earth. As we wonder at the beauty of creation, may we seek vital connections among all that depends on the earth for life. Hear us, O God. You rule the nations with justice and love. Give the leaders of the earth assurance of all your abiding presence, that they lead not by fear, but with love for those they are called to service. Hear us, O God. You have loved us so that we can love others. We pray for all in need of your love, those who are poor, lowly, outcast, weak, or fearful. We lift you to all victims of domestic violence. Pry for, provide for the needs of all, especially Bob, Catherine, Gib, Artis, Don, Heidi, Augie, Phyllis, Eric, Bowden, Chris, Gloria, Arlene, Leslie, Terry, Gerard, Val, Sean, David, Aaron, Janice, Bob, Joyce, Cody, Sam, John, Stephen, Sherry, Robert, Gail, Ron, Billy, Lily, Kimberly, Heidi, Neil, and Bridget. Hear us, O oh God. You gather us with all the saints by the power of your spirit. Today we give thanks for Pastor Ariana and the students at Eastern Washington University and our partner congregation, Emmanuel in Chini. We also give thanks for the life of Shelley Bernard, daughter of Paul and Sue Lupert at the time of her death. With them, may our hearts live forever in your keeping. Hear us, O oh God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. If you're worshiping this morning with others, this is an opportunity for you to share the peace of Christ with them. If you are by yourself, technically you're not by yourself. We are all connected in word and sacrament, and so you are having the peace shared with those around you, even though they're not with you. This would be the time when we would receive an offering. We thank you for your generosity some of you have been giving uh, by way of our website. Others have been mailing money to the church, a check. Thank you for that. This enables the ministries of St. Mark's and also the ministries through St. Mark's into this community and around the world. Thank you for your generosity. Will you join me in prayer? God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us into your reign. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, remember us in your reign and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
This is the time for our children's talk, and so I invite anyone who would like to move closer to the screen to come on in. Normally that's children, but it can be lots of other folks too. Today I want to talk to you about love. Love from the second reading from 1 John. What do you know about love? I bet you know the kind of love you feel down here. But you know, John is talking about the kind of love that you know up here, that's based on actions by God. God sent Jesus to you. That's how much God loves you. And that calls us to love one another too, just as God has loved us in Jesus. That's what John was writing about. Not so much about feelings, but about knowing the good news that God has done in Jesus. You received God's love because you were created by God, of course, but you also received it in the waters of baptism too. And there you received God's spirit so that you always have God's presence with you and you're enabled to serve others. A long time ago, I used to work with a children's choir at St. John's Lutheran in Sprague and we used to sing this song that is based on the second reading for today. I'd like to sing it for you now. Well, I will. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever loves not, knows not God, for God is love. Beloved, let us love one another, 1 John 4, 7 and 8. Great to be with you today. Thanks for listening. Receive this blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bless you now and forever. Amen.
God is calling us today, leading us into tomorrow. Together, let us pray. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.